When we moved to Somerset West in 2008, I approached Dad and asked if we could write his biography. Who'd want to read that, he asked. Well, me, I said, but your story encompasses many other people's stories and could serve as a lovely history of the New Harvest community and also perhaps as an encouragement to other Christians. When we moved to England in 2016, Dad asked if it was perhaps time to write my story. That doesn't feel finished yet, but I did start to reflect on all I had learnt through the churches I've journeyed with. It felt a freedom and new harvest. I was influenced by Dad's emphasis on intimacy with God, Mom's love for classical music and hymns, Pete and Sandy's introduction of contemporary music and instruments, and choirs into worship, Philip's emphasis on spirit-led free styles of worship and the latest worship songs, Timber and Matthew's use of jazz and gospel, Doreen's plays, poems and the songs she wrote with Carol, and the adventurous experimentation that took place at both Theosk and New Harvest. All in all, it was an incredibly fertile ground for a worship leader to grow up in, and I learned there how music could be used to bridge gaps or create them. When we moved to Somerset West, I was given access to three congregations at Coronation Avenue Methodist. At the 8am service, I was given a deeper understanding of hymns and liturgy. Through the 9.30 service, all age worship encouraged amazing creativity. At the 6.30 service, I was exposed to styles like rock, indie and pop and looked at how these could be used to reach another generation. We celebrated the differences in all these worship styles, but also looked for ways to bridge them. Ever deeper experiences ensued as divisions in our community broke down through shared devotional experiences. Perhaps one of the greatest surprises was the development of the junior and senior school worship teams and watching the life that these youngsters injected into the church as a whole through the discovery of their own worship identity. Finally, we discovered how musical theatre could in fact be used to minister and bridge divisions too, as we put on several productions including one written by our very own Cathy Donald on The Prodigal Son. Finally, in 2017, we were welcomed into Hailing Island Baptist Church here in the UK. This is a small community with a talented worship team, and I've had to learn loads of new songs and also a new style of leading again. It's a freer style of worship, which requires more flexibility and ironically, stronger leadership. But in a small community, everyone chips in. And it's wonderful as we gather each week to hear harmonies and prayers and testimonies arising from around the room as we create worship together. With the wonders of modern technology more freely accessible in the UK than ever before, I glimpsed the possibility of being able to draw my three worship families together and all that they represent in an album of songs written by their own team members. Initially, I had grand plans to try and include every musician but as the project grew and progressed, this became increasingly difficult to orchestrate. So in the end, we had to settle on a few folk who would represent each team, both past and present. As we prayed about a title for the album, Perseverance came to mind for me. Independently, Nick got James 1 verse 12, which says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Every contributor to this album has been through the mill of life and faced the very real choice of giving up on their faith at some point. Many of their songs have come from experiences of finding God in those times and choosing to press on. We live in an age where free will is at its freest and responsibility and accountability are perhaps at their lowest. Unfortunately, society is reaping the grim rewards of this shallowness and there is a desperate need for people who can show by their very lives the value of persevering in their faith long enough to reveal the profound power and worth of the gospel and their Christian communities. Dad reminded me in his testimony that being a Christian isn't for sissies and I've had to admit that unfortunately I am a sissy. Fortunately, God is incredibly faithful in answering those prayers that we offer up at our weakest points. This album's contributors offer you their songs and pray that you will be blessed, 
encouraged and challenged as you encounter God through them.